Every day I was plotting to get that one police, he knew I wanted to get in. That nigga would. I didn't want to get gunned down. I just want to get my hands around that nigga neck. So as far as like Nipsey, he would go on and, and, and conquer the world, you know, right from y'all neighborhood. Um, myself as a fan being, you know, in Atlanta, being able to catch the early mixtapes and being inspired and listening to them when I used to work late at night and needed some inspiration to get through that late night shift. You know, he was the person I was playing, you know, and then that unfortunately would get cut short. I would say kind of not that necessarily, I'm sure that wasn't his peak because he was on to do so many different great things, but in such an unfortunate moment, releasing his first album and we would lose Nipsey in 2019. And the, um, the opportunity is that you were there to be able to speak with you, that you were there in that moment, you know? How often do you kind of play that back in your head about replaying those those moments with Nip, so last moments with Nip? Uh, damn near every day, uh, cause the day of, like prior to the incident, I, I sat there and I said, bro, you finally made it. We sat there and we talked. I said, man, you finally made it. We just did the DJ Cali video. I like, man, you finally made it, bro. You know, you find you own. You know what I mean? Earlier that week, him and Lauren London, they was on the four wheeler up and down Slauson and shit. You know, I'm like, man, put a helmet on that girl. The next morning, he out there smoking a the blunt on the four wheeler. I'm like, nigga, you bored, nigga. Feel me? Come back here. And I showed that nigga his storeroom. I was like, man, look at the shirts. I got shit stacked up. Because they didn't he go to the Marathon store, this store, and that store. That motherfucker filled with nothing but inventory. It was. The, the, this yeah. is the story you go in where all that was filled to the roof. I'm talking about 1,500 square feet here, 1,500 square feet there, nigga, filled to the roof. Small, medium, large, XL, 2X, 3X, all the way to 5X. I'm talking about stacked to the ceiling. And I'm, he might have had over 100 different designs. So look at all the designs. I'm talking about you get lost in it. And man, bro, come in there and look around that motherfucker. Like, he couldn't believe it. Like, bro, I never seen this shit look this clean. You know, once you, once you learn how to smoke dope, you know how to clean some shit up, man. That motherfucker. Looking immaculate, like nigga, shit folded, nigga, shit, ugh, ugh. And, and, and like I said, I was a part of the team, you know. If, if a smoker took a shit, all money in truck, I got to guard it with the shovel and clean it up. And at the same token, Nip will be right there. I know I got it, bro. It wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing, bro, wouldn't do that. He wouldn't tell me to do nothing he wouldn't do. You know what I mean? He was hands on with it. Um, leadership, leadership. Now, as far as, um, you know, in this situation, we would have a suspect, a person's name would come up. Um, Eric Holder would be the, the the identified shooter in this situation. Um, as you know, Nipsey has been a conversation. People talk about him all the interviews. He's a conversation. Uh, he, uh, Little Boosie was on Vlad a few years ago, and he mentioned that he felt that Eric Holder was hypnotized by hatred, which caused him to do that. How much do you feel that is truth in your own I guess trying to understand why Eric would even do that to Nipsey. That's that's right on point. Hatred, hatred, jealousy, envy. That, that's that's all it was. Like, uh, had they had a real, had they had a real beef or something, had they been beefing, I could say nothing. Had they had a real beef, that was just a, a that was just an all out blatant crime. That was all hate, and jealousy. You know what I mean? Had they been beefing and and they was going at it, you know what I mean? That would be a different ball game. You know, nobody could say nothing about nothing. You know, uh, this dude did a foul crime. Uh, when his drugs start wearing off, the nigga went and turned himself in. You know, he didn't come back and do no street justice. You know what I mean? He didn't get no nobody no action at him. You know, he did a he did a bush crime and killed. He killed the heart of the city. He killed. He killed. The, he killed. You know. A uh, hundred Eric Holders ain't worth one nymph. I wouldn't give a fuck. It's a lot of these niggas out here wasting air. They don't, they in the way. They in the way, they ain't got no purpose, they ain't got nothing, but, you know, it was God's plan. I don't care what nobody say. When Nymph was in his casket, he had a smile on his face and he was like this. He had a smile, job well done. I looked at a nigga for an hour, nigga. I was like, man, man, I've been to a hundred, hundred, a million funerals, I could say damn near. Feel me? And I see when the, your life is gone. I see when your shit sucked in and you eat that. Like, that don't even look like my nigga. Cuz look full of life. When that nigga died, he was greeted by angels. I don't give a fuck what nobody got to say. Cuz was glowing. Cuz beard was glowing. Cuz had the chain on. Big old diamond nigga sitting there like, nigga, like, I did that. Like, nigga, don't even, I done that. He had that job well done look on his face. He didn't, you know, he, 
He didn't go outside. He went out. He he, he served his purpose. It, it was it was nothing I could have did. It was nothing nobody could have did, bro. You know, me and my grandma talk about that because I know if I'd have been out there, no matter what, I was gonna take a bullet out. I went for the gun, whatever. Everybody say what they say, or whatever. You know, um, yeah. I, I you know I I wasn't there, so we'll 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 never know. We'll never. Know. We'll never what's know. the um What's the craziest conspiracy you heard about Nipsey's passing? Uh, I'm just, sure you get a lot. Just, any, just anything with me, that was the craziest. Like, just anything with my name involved. I seen a nigga had a, a green screen shit. He had me trying to go in Nip Pocket. You seen a nigga like this on some green screen shit. I said, this nigga trying to get me wow. killed. You know what I mean? That motherfucker trying to get me killed. That nigga went in his computer and had some shit like that. And I'm like, damn, imagine if a motherfucker bleed this shit. You know what I mean? You don't know the, the sh a motherfucker come up with some bullshit theory trying to get some clicks. It, it'll get a nigga like me killed. You know, uh, after I got out of jail that night at the Nip Pass, I stood on Slauson and Crenshaw like whatever my fate was, it, it, if the city wasn't going to respect me or love me or or think I had something to do with it or think anything, they're going to they gonna kill me right here where they killed bro. I'm going to lay down right here. I'm like, you're not going to, I stayed down there for the last, I've been down there, I didn't do an interview for three years. This is my first year doing interviews. I didn't do no interviews for three years after Nip Pass. There ain't no interviews. You know, I right. was in that parking lot cleaning up right. candles, keeping those murals straight, uh, boot bopping niggas, making sure shit niggas, stopping niggas from getting robbed and witnessing all type of bullshit, witnessing the homies dying. You know, uh, Nipsey died. 30 days later, Dominique got out of jail. He got stabbed in his heart right there. He died in my arms right there in that parking lot 30 days later. He may have got 30 candles. Wow. Nip filled up the whole parking lot. Cud got 30 candles, but Cud was equally, I love Cud just as much as I love bro. I gotcha. love fats like I love Nip. And I'm losing, I love Tape Off. I love Mad Ronnie. All these niggas you never heard about that I'm losing on the weekly, on the monthly. We was getting a funeral a week, two funerals in a week. Mm. Dumb shit. Then the pandemic hit, niggas dropping, dropping, dropping. Stomp gone, homies, man, real, real soldiers is not here. Nigga, the rapture, niggas is gonna be missing. Niggas is gonna be disappearing. The rapture, niggas is gonna be just... So y'all sit back and think, y'all sit back and, you know, watch the internet. <laughs> Now, you know, of course, um, recently, Eric Holder would get 60 years for what he did to Nip. And you were also, you know, you stood up and were able to go testify. You confronted him in court. Was that, like, accurate to report? Like, you confronted oh, him? Oh, man, about, he like, me out two or three times. I got all the paperwork, though. You know what I mean? I got all the paperwork. I made sure I got all the transcript, everything I said, you know. Uh, yeah, I went in. I went in. I, I looked that man in his eye and the 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 the... the, the his, his his defense decided to call me back on the stand two more extra times. You feel me? So you gave me more action than to look this nigga in the eye. You know what I mean? Every day I was plotting to get that one police he knew I wanted to get in. That nigga would, I didn't want to get gunned down. I just wanted to get my hands around that nigga neck. And like I said, the day I called my uh, lawyer and I called the bail bondsman, I was still on probation at the time, so they told me I wasn't going to be able to bail out. They said if I take off on cuz, it's a rap, you know what I mean? And I know. So you were really fighting to maybe, you know, get a lick in. Man, you don't knock it off, nigga. A lick, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna choke cuz best I could. They had to pull me off of him. So, but like I said, when I the first day, the police right here had a had a pistol. But that first day, I wanted to get in the one dude. He was sleeping in a chair. But that one big old dude, mm -hmm. he looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then he he had the Billy right there. I'm like, man, he. He liable to gun me down. Like I don't mind if you tase me. I didn't want. I just didn't want to get popped. You know what I mean? I didn't want. Yeah. I didn't want this nigga to waste two lives. You know what I mean? You feel about it? But the day I was going into action, I went out there. Then they got the big old split in the back of his head. So when I walked down the court, I said, "Damn!" And the whole courtroom went on one. So you know, I got my satisfaction because I got to talk shit to that weird ass nigga. Cause, it, Cause he had no business doing what he did, bro. That was foul. You could have took the favor, right. bro. Nobody want to listen to your diss if you was mad. So was it, because they said this story, I mean, based off what you're saying, like, you know, this is just us trying to get some clarity. They didn't have a past beef, right? So it wasn't like it was an ongoing thing. Was it really about, like, him asking about his paperwork? I, I've always heard he that story. He like, oh, he asked about he, some paperwork. He didn't and even then, ask about the paperwork. He didn't even ask about it. He, 
you, you say, for instance, you ain't seen your cousin in a while, but you've been hearing some bullshit. And you say, hey, look here, cuzzo. Hey, I've been hearing this bullshit. Man, they got some paperwork. I ain't read it, but you need to take care of it. And he moved on to the next fan.